Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, we're going to talk about the mechanic worker placement, or as other people like to call it, action selection. We'll go to the table next door and see a game that I was actually co-designing with my dad when he had broken his foot a couple uh, months ago, and kind of go maybe a little bit into not exactly the history of the mechanic itself, but how it can be used as not only a driving force within a game, but maybe even a couple ways that it could be coupled with another mechanic to make something even meatier. So let's jump on over to that table next door and see what we have in store. They say you should stick with what you know, and for my dad, that's gonna be Chinese food. So this worker placement game was heavily inspired by one called Lords of Waterdeep, which is a Dungeons and Dragons world set game that uses worker placement to recipe build. What I mean by that is that players will be collecting resources and committing those resources to different objectives that will score them victory points to win the game. As you can see here at our homebrew version or so, we have a victory point track all along the board, very similar to Lords of Waterdeep, and we're going to have these recipe cards here on the left hand side that players will be completing for victory points. There are three different types in Takeout Dynasty. There are the appetizers, which are generally less ingredients for a lower amount of points. We have the entrees, which are going to be the heavy hitters for all kinds of resources or ingredients in this restaurant-themed game for victory points. And then there are also going to be desserts, which are going to also be about the same uh, or less, I suppose, uh, for victory points and ingredients. The game, or the mechanic rather, of worker placement oftentimes relies on player interaction that isn't going to be direct, that is to say targeting a player by reducing or attacking their victory point total directly, but instead indirect interaction. In this game, each player will have a number of chefs that they will place at different tables or workstations in the restaurant to collect a different resource or again ingredient to commit to one of these different recipes that they have on their player board. At any given time, a player will have one of each, potentially playing around with the rule of more than one of each uh, type of recipe. And so as you are committing your workers to the different ingredients, whoops, I left the yellows over there, so let's just go ahead and say that I grabbed the red. You're going to want to commit them onto a recipe that requires said ingredient. The indirect player interaction comes in where maybe there's a scarcity or limited number of worker placement spots per the number of players in the game. And you can sort of block out others by racing them to different areas of the board. In a lot of different worker placement games, the number of actions that you take or the number of workers that you have to place onto the board can be very important. And a really great maybe action spot will be to accrue an additional worker, which will then increase your productivity throughout the game. For hours, the idea is that if you can complete all three of your recipes in a single turn, a single round, then you can actually score an additional 10 bonus points, which really incentivizes players to hold on to what they have, or rather not finish, you know, whatever recipes they can as quickly as possible, but strategically place out and hopefully weigh against what the other players are going for to maximize their efficiency. As you can see here, we also have a couple extra victory point scoring conditions for each recipe that you complete, each type of recipe, I should say, or each course perhaps is more accurate. The leaders in each will win an additional number of victory points. So this kind of combats against that extra 10 point bonus I mentioned earlier and really has players trying to think what's going to be best for them, not only in the moment, but over the course of the entire game. As you can see as well, based on the number of players, a number of spots will be open. And so that's going to increase perhaps the drama, the player interaction, as discussed earlier, and having players really consider the weight of their decisions. Thematically, each resource cube or color is going to be a different ingredient. So we have maybe some kind of sugar, dessert, meat, fish, vegetable, rice, and some other miscellaneous ingredient type. But overall, yeah, we had a really great time coming up with this together.
So just to reiterate one last time, worker placement allows you to select different actions and simultaneously block out other players from doing so, in most cases, with a certain, at the beginning of the game, limited number and hopefully throughout the game increasing it to increase your productivity or efficiency and your victory point total, at least in the case of Takeout Dynasty. Other worker placement games include The Manhattan Project, Dice Hospital, and Everdell. In the intro, I talked about how worker placement could be combined with other types of mechanics. And so, not necessarily tableau building, but with Takeout Dynasty, you do kind of have that thing that you're working towards to try to complete and make awesome. Tableau building as a mechanic itself, which we can go into in another video, I think has more to do with building up as opposed to Takeout Dynasty, where whatever recipes you complete on your turn, you will then replace by drawing a new one from the deck. Some potential other cool mechanics to combine with worker placement could be area control or maybe even deck building, where certain pools of cards that you're going to draft or take from are locationally specific. Hmm, maybe that could be an expansion once the base game is complete. I hope you had a good time with me walking through a sample and very greatly inspired game of worker placement that I've been working on. But if you're working on one currently, let us know how it goes in the comments below and maybe what sets it apart from the rest. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on future content like this. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint. And together, let's build something great. Oh, and by the way, the Game Crafter is celebrating 10 years this month. It's so crazy that they've been just continuing to grow and develop and make things better for me and you and hopefully all other designers out there. So any order that you actually make this month of July 2019, you'll be eligible to win a gift certificate up to $99 as well as a token of appreciation for your continued support. So feel free to check them out today and keep on gaming.